Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. I will be glad and I will rejoice in it. You know, you make up your mind how the day is going to be for you. If you decide you are going to rejoice, nobody can take the joy of the Lord away from you. Everybody say with me, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and I will rejoice in it. God bless every one of you. Can we all rise up together? Just rejoice together in the Lord for the great things the Lord is doing. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name, O Lord, because we know you are a great and mighty God. We thank you for the great thing you are doing in this stage. Lord, with all the other ministers of all the churches and the ministers of this church deep alive, we're uniting together. We're going to make the church in this state to be a beacon of light to all other churches in this country in jesus name Amen. and we're praying oh lord every one of us you will use us every one of us you'll be with us and we will do exploits for the lord in jesus name Amen. let your anointing multiply upon every minister here confirm the word in every heart and in every ministry in jesus name we pray and amen god bless every one of you you can be seated today in my two sessions we are going to talk on the negative side as well as the positive side the reason we're doing that is to make everything complete so that if anything happens when you go out in the ministry it will not take you by surprise you'll be able to hear yes i heard that before I knew that before and I know I can handle this and still move up to the top of the ladder where the Lord has called me I'm talking to you now on overcoming the enemies of progress in ministry overcoming the enemies of progress in ministry there are enemies of progress in ministry when the Lord has given you ministry challenges may come but don't allow those challenges to make you look back or to make you think that you cannot make it anymore or to make you feel that it cannot be done it will still be done in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 for a great door an effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries yes you need to overcome those adversaries those enemies those challenges so that you can be what you ought to be but thank god for paul the apostle he tells us in second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 now thanks be unto god which always causes us to triumph in christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place in spite of the challenges despite the challenges and the opposition that he faced he says now thanks be unto god which always causes us to triumph in christ always makes us to triumph in christ and he maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place why and how in second corinthians chapter 10 reading from verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ it says yes we are walking in the flesh we still have our blood our flesh our bone just like everybody else but we're not walking according to the flesh we're not walking according to human worldly carnal principles but the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty the weapons the lord is giving us during this time they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds 
every stronghold in your life of family or ministry will be pulled down every hindrance or barrier to your progress in ministry will be pulled down casting down imaginations casting down imaginations you know sometimes the devil comes to make a home or even a throne in the hearts of people by giving them imaginations negative imagination destructive imagination and kind of destroying imaginations you see a person can begin to imagine failure he can begin to imagine defeat until he becomes so weakened and then he follows through on that negative imagination negative prophecy and he fulfills them but we have the weapons to cast down all those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing into captivity every thought your thoughts will not bring you into captivity but you will bring every thought into captivity and then it says to the obedience of christ what are the enemies of progress that we need to know identify and when they come up in your ministry you're able to say yes i heard you are coming i knew that will happen i knew that will take place and then you are able to stand against it and walk against it and you're able to overcome the first enemy of progress is persecution persecution acts of the apostles chapter 16 in acts chapter 16 reading from verse 9 and a vision appeared to paul in the night there stood a man of macedonia and prayed him saying come over into macedonia and help us obviously paul the apostle had a ministry in macedonia he didn't know but the lord revealed a vision to him has the lord been painting some picture in your heart has the lord been giving you some vision has the lord been telling you what it will look like in the future was it a dream or was it a trance was it a word of prophecy or was it something dropped in your heart or did the lord show you the face of some people and he's saying that you are going to minister to these people in the future and the lord is preparing you in whichever way it may come it came to paul the apostle like a vision come over into macedonia and help us and after he had seen the vision immediately we endeavored to go into macedonia assuredly gathering that the lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them and eventually he got there one of the cities and then a woman received them and received the message but beyond that verse 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by suit saying the same followed paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation as you read that for the first time would you be happy that if this damsel never knew paul before and paul came to town and the lady was bearing testimony these are the men of god the servants of the most high god showing unto us the way of salvation before you get too happy think about it the people in the city they knew this lady that she had a spirit of divination and they knew that she was walking by the power of satan and they knew that she was bringing her masters much gain much gain and she didn't have just one master if you look at verse 16 she brought her masters much gain by so saying so the people in the city knew now as paul the apostle was going and this lady kept on following and said these are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation what if paul the apostle was taken by that what if paul the apostle was fascinated interested in that and then call her to be one of the workers then the people are going to think that paul the apostle was using the power of the devil and so saying 
It's an enemy that may try to pretend and disguise and then come into the midst of the people of God in the ministry. It's an enemy you need to watch against. Watch against the praise of men. It's an enemy. Watch against the flattery of people. That's an enemy. Those are things that come to us in, in the ministry. And then we then, you know, rest on our oars and we give up and we're not watchful anymore. And then we're told that verse 18 and this she did many days stop for a moment and you know the way we are here we're all wired up and we're all stirred up and then the spirit of god is turning us up and moving within us and if you were there paul and luke and the rest of them you might have asked yourself we just came out of that minister's conference what did we have the other day new anointing and new power new authority we can do something How about this lady crying after us are we going to leave her like that cast nothing out but not paul the apostle why oh because there was no television to announce the meeting there was no radio to announce the meeting and there were no large members in that city to go into all the city bring people together and while they were going to the meeting then she kept on making noise and shouting these are the servants of the most high god and then the crowd gathered after she had done that many days and paul the apostle allowed the crowd to gather before giving the devil a technical knockout don't be in a hurry when you are to minister don't be in a hurry when you're going to do something wait on the lord and let the spirit of god direct you as to what to be done how it should be done and when to do it if you miscalculate and you do the right thing at the wrong time you may not have the results you ought to have and that is what has helped some of us in ministry timing timing the time to do something doing the right thing at the right time in front of the right congregation and then we're told in verse 18 but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit and we don't have time to you know explain today i believe god will give us another time i said god will give us another time because i believe this is not my last uh, minister's conference in this city i'm just attracted and fascinated to this place i'm coming again and you remind me at that time when we have it again we need to talk on a series on the gifts of the spirit and how the gifts of the spirit are received and how the gifts of the spirit are operated to the growth of the church now here is it paul the apostle had the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge he knew that this woman he had never met before was acting by the spirit of so saying by the spirit of a python by the spirit of the devil and then he was grieved in his spirit let me just say, throw this at you. This, you know, sometimes you are praying as a minister. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and then you've gone forward and you have the gifts of the Spirit, sometimes somebody is in the congregation and he has, you know, maybe pain in the heart, or somebody is uh, palpitating as if the fellow is going to give up. All of a sudden, you are preaching, and then you're having the feeling of palpitation as if you are going to faint yourself and there are sometimes it's like you know you have a pain in your ankle very very sharp as if, and then you you try to turn your ankle and you say before i came in here i was all right i was perfect in hell why is this happening to me the lord is telling you that there's somebody in the congregation and he has exactly that problem and then if you understand you just say well the person over there having that sharp pain in your ankle can you raise up your hand he raises up the hand and you say in the name of jesus get out of that place and the thing is relieved and then you have the relief in your own ankle when you have the relief then you say you are healed are you not then he waves it and says i'm healed and you wonder how do you know the lord was demonstrating the operation in your body because you are part of the body of christ and the member is having that and that's why you make the connection and uh, you know if uh, you know sometimes you are, you are preaching and it appears you are feeling this you know you're all right and then you just say the fellow there that is feeling that dizziness can you raise up your hand he raises up the hand he say in the name of jesus dizziness and whatever is causing get out of that place and then the thing is cleared and your head is clear as well and say are you not here you are healed then they wave the hand then you wonder how is that when you have the gifts of the spirit it will you'll be grieved in your spirit or something will happen that you will know you'll be able to detect here is what is happening that's what happened to paul the apostle here being grieved he turned and said to the spirit 
I command thee in the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Can I pass this without telling you something? Who was this fellow in verse uh, in verse 18? The first line was, was the person is she or he? Verse 18. The first line. This did who? She many days. But look at the last line. And uh, he you know sometimes uh, why is it that you know somebody demon possessed and the fellow is a lady and uh, you know while they you are trying to hold the person four men will come and these four men they're trying to hold the woman now she is a she and uh, the fellow is so strong and mighty and powerful and you say how is the woman as strong as this no it's not the woman it's a he inside that is causing that and when you are talking to that evil spirit you are casting that evil spirit out you are not talking to a she you are talking to a he and you know if you don't understand that and you are talking to the wrong personality you don't have the result if you are you know thinking that she is the one doing that she is the one acting like that then you misfire but when you fire your ammunition against the spirit that is actually working you'll be successful every time give me a good amen, amen. and so he came out the same hour and then in verse 19 when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone they caught paul and silas and drew them into the marketplace and uh, and to, onto the rulers eventually they got to the prison they got to the prison now here is where you need to be careful when you when something happens in your ministry and you're asking yourself why did this happen how is it we have done well we have done good and this negative thing is happening if god allowed it there is a reason why he allowed it he wants he wants to show you a greater miracle a greater manifestation of his power and then we're told in verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners had them they threw them into the prison paul why are you singing i'm singing because i'm expecting a miracle i'm singing because i know all things work together for good for the people who are called of god those who are called according to his purpose i know that might be thrown into the prison here there's a reason for this and i'm waiting to see the reason why i am here while i am waiting there is nothing else to do but to be singing that's why they were singing when something appears negative on the surface and you have not known the death of that thing that happened to you in the ministry keep on rejoicing a miracle is coming on the way keep on rejoicing something greater something higher is coming in the way that's why they started singing and suddenly verse 26 there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately all the prison all the prison doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed god opened the prison doors and then we're told that all the fetters were taken away from them now what would you have done it's dead night and then your chains are taken away and the windows are open and the doors are open now you're free and the keeper of the prison is asleep what would you have done some people will run out and jump and say silas hurry up yes god has delivered us i'm not going to stay in this place another minute and we're going to go to a place that nobody will ever recognize paul why did you not jump out run away god has not finished what he wanted to do i'm still waiting and i'll keep on waiting here until i see the end of this drama wait be patient when god has done something don't think he has finished what he wants to do when god has given you deliverance don't think he has finished what he wanted to do keep on waiting you see if you understand all these principles in the word of god you will be marching on and moving up in leaps and bounds in ministry you will not be in a hurry you will know god still wants to do another thing and then we're told in verse 27 the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors he drew he open he drew out he saw it, and he would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had, had been fled and paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here 
then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and he brought them out and said sirs what must I do to be saved I need salvation his whole family was saved you see what the Lord is leading us to God will turn every negative thing to become positive and through that negative thing you overcome the enemy of progress and then you are going to have progress another thing what's another enemy that you need to overcome you ought to conquer number two the philistines the philistines i'm looking at first second samuel second samuel chapter five in second samuel chapter five i'm reading from verse three second samuel chapter five verse three so all the elders of the of israel came to the king to hebron and king david made a league an agreement a covenant with them in hebron before the lord and they anointed david king over israel they anointed david king over israel now you need to you must study your own life and you must think deep about your own life now when david was anointed when was he first anointed i'm sure you are bible students when was he first anointed by samuel for samuel chapter chapter what 16 for samuel chapter 16 david was anointed who did he confront in chapter 17 goliath the philistine watch it when he had the first anointing he confronted goliath the philistine and now he's anointed again because you see that anointing was to prepare him to take over this anointing was to tell him to now take over that's the difference between the two he was first anointed to prepare him to take over but in this anointing now he was being told the kingdom is now yours and you are not just over hebron and you are not just over judah you're over the whole of israel take over and what did he see look at verse 17 of this same chapter verse 17 it says but when the philistines heard that they had anointed david king over israel all the philistines came up to seek david and david heard of it and went down to the hold you see the reason why many of us fail is that we don't study our lives and we don't try to see where you are at the first anointing what happened at that time what enemy what opposer what kind of opposition showed up at that time when you had that first anointing what did you go through how did you overcome at that time now this new anointing that is coming upon you new challenges that are coming to you and the new opportunity and privilege that is coming to you are you thinking that the devil has forgotten the old tricks no he's still going to follow the old tricks and eventually the philistines showed up and these are enemies you need to overcome these are enemies to, you need to be able to conquer before you'll be able to move on in ministry and so that's why the philistines also in verse 18 came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. and david inquired of the lord saying shall i go up to the philistines will thou deliver them into my hands and the lord said unto david go up for i doubt i will doubtless deliver the philistines into thine hands and it, what the lord is telling us is that when he has given you the anointing for you to be able to effectively manifest or receive that victory and deliver uh, to the people of god you are going to pass through the garrison of the philistines get ready but thank god you are going to overcome because the first time david overcame and so as, as at the present time there was there was no problem he was also going to overcome and he overcame them in fact we are told in verse 10 look at verse 10 and david went on and grew great and the lord god of hosts was with him partnership with god every time you have got a new anointing and you have got a new authority and you have got a new vision and you have got a new privilege in the kingdom of god please remember there will be enemies of progress to your ministry that will try to see how to bring you down but they will not succeed number one is persecution number two is the philistines number three is pleasure pleasure as you go up in ministry and the lord impacts your life with greater success greater opportunities and greater open doors 
you will see that the higher you go the more privileges you'll have and the more honor you will have and the more money you will have and uh, the more hell uh, fellowship of the members of the church and even other churches you will have and the possibility of making pe of people making life easier for you that will be there and then everybody is taking care of you if you want to carry your bag they say no papa don't carry the bag they carry it for you if you are walking they say no come into the car and if whatever you are doing the it, it, pleasure will present itself when the lord has lifted you up and it is for you to know that this pleasure am i going to allow the pleasure to hinder my prayer life am i going to allow the pleasure to hinder my study of the word of god am i going to allow you know sometimes to go into into a country i go to a, a, a number of countries and when i go to those countries maybe you want to have a crusade and uh, you know you want to have a crusade and the family here is inviting you come and come and eat in our you know in our in our house and when you have done that somebody invites you for lunch and somebody invites you for supper or dinner and then the following day somebody they're lining up they're telling the people organizing the program please i want the evangelist to come to my house and they all line them up and when you know when you visit people like that they prepare something that is so nice and so good and so great and uh, and you are there for a crusade if you are not careful pleasure will draw you away from the life of prayer and discipline and then you go to the you know you, you eat a very heavy meal at uh, about uh, 5 30 in the evening and then you are to preach uh, you know deliverance and miracle at uh, six o'clock and uh, you know you drank and the, what the, the thing is so good and then you get to the platform you are yawning you feel like going to bed like sleeping and the devil is saying i don't yawn i'm ready here for you tonight and i you know I'm, I'm going to show you something and then you go there you can hardly carry your body and then you stand up and say everybody let us uh, rise up and pray today god is here with us and we are trusting the lord that god will do something today you cannot talk because food is choking your throat pleasure can become a problem to the people when they are growing up in the ministry now in uh, first kings chapter 4 we're looking at the life of this man the life of solomon in first kings chapter 4 reading from verse 29 first kings chapter 4 reading from verse 29 here we see what god did for solomon and god gave solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and lightness of heart and even as a son that is on the seashore and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt for he was wiser than all men that's the wisdom the lord had given him you look at verse 34 and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom he had success in ministry he had progress in ministry and he had the appreciation of other people the recognition of other people in ministry and they were all coming from all countries to seek the wisdom of solomon but the Lord warned him, and the Lord alerted him and said, Be very, very careful. Look at chapter 6, reading from verse 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes, and execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments to walk in them then will i perform my word with thee which i spake unto david thy father and i will dwell among the children of israel and will not forsake my people israel the lord said solomon i've given you wisdom i've exalted you i promoted you i put something in your life that you need for the ministry now there is an if now there is a condition you keep yourself in the path of righteousness and you keep yourself in line with my commandment if you do that then i'll keep on promoting you i'll keep on exalting you i'll keep on manifesting myself in your ministry that's what we need to remember brothers and sisters the lord has favored us and the lord has blessed us and the lord has touched our lives and he wants us to be channels of blessing and because he wants us to be channels of blessings he puts an if he said i have blessed you i've done this for you 
count your blessings name them one by one and see what the lord has done for you maybe the lord raised you to be a pastor or to be an evangelist and you just became an evangelist a pastor a few years ago see your membership already and see the miracles that have taken place in your ministry and see the great things the lord is doing look at the provision the lord has given you how could you have done that in these few years the lord is saying you have not seen anything yet i will do more in your ministry and you will do greater things and get to greater heights in jesus name but the lord is saying watch make sure that you are fulfilling the condition of my permanent fellowship with you so that i will not leave you and i will not forsake you chapter 9 of first kings first kings chapter 9 reading from verse 2 and the lord appeared to solomon the second time the lord appeared to solomon the second time look at verse 4 and if thou wilt walk before me as david thy father walked and in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that i have commanded thee and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments here the lord came to solomon again and said solomon i blessed you and then you have also honored me and exalted my name and you have built this edifice now i'm going to hear your prayer but there is still an if if that will work before me in the integrity of your heart now when you become an evangelist because god is raising up great evangelists in this meeting yeah. give me a good amen. amen when you become an evangelist and you move from place to place to place the lord will be with you and the power of the lord will work with you but anywhere you go keep to your integrity of heart integrity of heart integrity that the things you will not do at home don't do it in the foreign field on the evangelistic field the things you will not do when your wife is there don't do when you go to the evangelistic field and your wife is not there because that is integrity you keep the integrity of your heart so that god will keep on promoting you and exalting and leading you on and on that's what god was telling solomon in verse 5 then i will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon israel forever as i promised to david thy father saying there shall not fail thee a man to sit upon the throne there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of israel but if he shall turn at all from following me and the lord was not taking anything for granted he said solomon so far so good so far so wonderful so far so beautiful so far so appreciable i really appreciate you so far but if ye shall at all turn from following me ye and your children will not and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which i have set before you and but go and serve other gods and worship them then i will cut off israel out of the land which i have given them i will cut off israel out of the land that i've given them he said now you are their king if you lead them astray if you follow other gods if you follow false doctrine my favor that had been with you will not be with you anymore and this house which i have hallowed and honored and set apart for my name will i cast out of my sight and israel shall be a proverb and a byword among the people how did uh, solomon relate to this first kings chapter 11 verse 1 in first kings chapter 11 verse one pleasure took hold of him pleasure got the better part of him pleasure brought him down from the exalted position to a falling position he fell from grace to grass verse one first kings chapter 11 but king solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of pharaoh can you see how far back he went women of the moabites that were under the curse and the ammonites and the edomites and the zidonians and the hittites 
he was collecting the women as if he was just collecting materials go to the market and buy go to the market and buy of the nations concerning which the lord said to the children of israel ye shall not go in unto them neither shall they come in unto you for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods solomon clave unto these in love how much prayer could he pray at this time how much sacrifice could he make at this time how much progress would he still keep on making at this time how much will it will his heart be attached to the god of heaven the god of israel at this time he clave unto those women in love in verse 3 and he had 700 wives and princess princesses and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart uh, when it says uh, he had 700 wives and had 300 concubines how many will you add them together 1000 how many days do we have in one in one year 365 and in two years that will be about uh, what's that now 700 and and th 30 is it now if he went to a woman each night each day he wouldn't have gone around all the women in two years a king see what he did now see what he became he became a slave to his flesh a slave to the women and of course they turned away his heart in verse 4 for it came to pass when solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the lord is god as was the heart of of david his father for solomon went after ashtoreth the goddess of the zidonians and after milcom the abomination of the ammonites and solomon did evil in the sight of the lord and went not fully after the lord as did david his father then did solomon build an high place of chemosh the abomination of moab in the hill that is before jerusalem and for molek the abomination of the children of ammon likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods he became an idol worshiper and he sacrificed in all those temples he built and there were hundreds of them many many of them because he did it for each of the strange woman that he got in verse 9 and the lord was angry with solomon because his heart was turned from the lord god of israel which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this sin that he should not go after other gods but he kept not that which the lord commanded therefore the lord said unto solomon for as much as this is done of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which i have commanded thee i will surely wrench the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant uh, you see the danger that people face he wasn't able to overcome and it was just because of pleasure number one persecution i pray you will overcome number two the philistines i pray you'll overcome number three pleasure i pray that pleasure will not get the better part of you number four prosperity prosperity can be wonderful when we handle it well abraham was prospered he handled it well but lot also got into prosperity but lot did not handle his prosperity well david was prospered but he handled it well and you'll find people in the bible like job he was prospered beyond all the people around him but he handled this prosperity well we must know what to do with prosperity be a master of the money and let don't let money be your master money is all right if we put it in the right place and we do the right thing with it and we do not allow the money to take hold of us and to control us and to turn our mind and to turn our brain but once it gets to our brain then it's in the wrong place once we put it on the throne of our hearts then it's in the wrong place 
put money in the right place and you don't you don't have any problem and if if god gives you money prosperity which he will give you because you need it for the ministry if you keep that money that prosperity in the right place no problem you'll be going on and on making use of that money that prosperity in the right way and your ministry will continue to expand in jesus name the problem only arises when the money or the prosperity comes into our hands and then turns our head and lifts us up in second chronicles chapter 26 second chronicles chapter 26 verses 0.5 and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. He's talking about Uzziah. His name is mentioned in verse 1. Verse 5, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. As long as was seeking the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. You need that prosperity to be able to do the work of the ministry. It's his provision and he will supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But look at verse 15 now. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal and his name spread far abroad for he was marvelously held till he was strong the lord will help you in a marvelous way your ministry is going to grow until you become strong by the grace of god and or the strength of the lord but look at verse 16 but when he was strong his heart was lifted up to his destruction he didn't recognize that prosperity can be a friend if you handle it well but prosperity can become an enemy if you don't handle it well and because he didn't know how to handle that prosperity he became an enemy he became lifted up when he was strong when his name had spread abroad when he was prospered when he had been held by many many people his heart was lifted up for he transgressed against the lord his god and he went into the temple of the lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense and azariah the priest went in after him and was seen for score priests of the lord that were valiant men and they stood with the withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him it appertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto the lord but to the priests the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense go out of the sanctuary for thou hast transgressed neither shall it be for thine honor from the lord god then Uzziah was wroth he was angry why are you talking to me like that I am the king i am strong i am rich i'm popular and everybody knows how great i am how can you talk to a great man like that that's what made him angry his prosperity got into his head his ability got into his head and his exaltation got into his head and when these people spoke to him he wouldn't listen and he had a sense in his hand to burn incense while he was wroth, while he was angry with the priest the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the lord from beside the incense altar and azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold he was leprous in his forehead and they thrust him out from thence yea he himself he stayed also to go out because the lord had smitten him the same lord that exalted him before the same lord that promoted him before the same lord that helped him before now smote him and Uzziah the king was a leper until the day of his death he died under that judgment he remained under that judgment and the judgment of god the condemnation that mission hung heavy upon him until he died are there not people like that who are great in the past are there, are there not people like that who are mighty in the past are there not people like that who have been held and made strong by the lord in the past but when their strength their prosperity their exaltation became so much in their mind that they felt i am and there's nobody else 
I am and there's nobody else that can do or accomplish or have what I've got then they came down in a terrible way so Zion the king was a leper until the day of his death and he dwelt in a separate several house being a leper for he was cut off from the house of the lord and joram his son was over the king's house judging the people of the land here we learn that there are enemies to the progress in the ministry uh, and i started with number one persecution and persecution doesn't really need to uh, hinder us or bring us down in the ministry number two the philistines number three the the pleasure of the flesh number four prosperity but i pray our prosperity will not be an enemy to us our prosperity will be our friend will be a helper and while we have that prosperity we'll be looking up to god alone who has given us that prosperity we'll appreciate the giver more than the gift will appreciate the one who has prospered us more than the prosperity and then that prosperity will keep on increasing number five and when i talk about this number five i want you to understand that marriage is wonderful having a wife a good wife a supportive wife an understanding wife a helpful wife an encouraging wife it's wonderful when you have a wife that understands your ministry when you have a wife that understand how god has called you and she wants to do everything to support that ministry and to help you lead you on and both of you working together you will not fail i said you will not fail let your wife know your vision let your wife know your calling let your wife know the vision of the lord that has been revealed unto you and then hold her hand and kneel down together present that vision to the lord together when you have a supportive wife like that you are going to march forward more than ever before in the ministry but some of us had married before we were born again you didn't know what the lord will be calling you to the lord called you eventually but you had married you had even got children and your wife although she can be as spiritual as she ought to be but it will still take time and while she's growing and moving on in the direction she ought to go you need to remember that her level is moderate because she just came to know the lord and now it happens that you are the pastor you are the evangelist you are the general overseer and she's your wife and everybody in the church will refer to her as mama they will refer to her as mommy she is the mother in israel although you understand that because you got married before you were born again that her level is moderate and so if you are not careful you will allow her to lead you the wrong direction and if she leads you in the wrong direction your ministry can actually be destroyed look at first kings chapter 21 first kings chapter 21 we're looking at it from verse 1 i really would have liked to read the whole chapter but i'll select the verses i will read in first kings chapter 21 verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that neighbors the jezreelite at a vineyard which is in jezreel had by the palace of ahab the king king of samaria and ahab spake unto neighbor saying give me thy vineyard that i may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and i will give thee for it a better vineyard than it or if it seem good to thee i will give thee the worth of it in money and neighbor said to ahab the lord forbid it me that i should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee and ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which neighbors the jezreelite had spoken to him for he had said i will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers and he laid him down upon his bed and he turned away his face and would not and would eat no bread but Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread let's stop there for a moment this Ahab was unhappy because he didn't have just this one thing now do you know uh, if you have um, just a little anchorship 
this uh, do you see mine look up here can you see this can you see how small it is do you have anything like that do you have any handkerchief or maybe paper wrap up the paper make it very small and raise it up and I, I need to illustrate something to you thank you very much he said what kind of preacher is this are you ready uh, just roll it up or fold it up or whatever make it very small now do it like this stretch it out like this can you still see me can you still see me okay bring it near near you now just close one eye and then bring it near the other one that you are opening bring it very very near bring it very very near bring it very very near can you still see me when thank you when a small insignificant thing comes too near to the eye of your heart it shuts out every good thing you have in your life just a garden and this man was a king he had many many other things count your blessings name them one by one see what the lord has done for you but because that little thing became so pronounced and became so significant it shut out every other privilege he had when it appears you have lost an opportunity when it appears you have lost a particular privilege when it appears you know neighbor has something that you desired but it is not given to you sit down and saying why am i thinking so much on this vineyard of neighbors why is it so close to my eye do i have other things yes i have in fact this man himself said i have other vineyards and i can give you a better vineyard why don't you go to that better vineyard why don't you rejoice in what you have why do you bring this isolated thing the a vineyard of neighbor so close to your eyes you cannot see any other thing it became so sad it became so unhappy and then the wife came in and the wife said why are you sad why are you so unhappy that you cannot eat and the king ahab told him told her rather this is the reason i'm so sad a good wife should have said uh -uh, my husband see what the lord has done for you why are you so disappointed you know sometimes you're a leader in the church and the lord has given you quite a lot of people and maybe your membership now you are one thousand maybe you are two thousand in the church and then there is one member just one member he might be a preacher might be an, as an associate might be whoever just that one member leaves the church or you hear that he's saying something negative about you and then you concentrate on just that one member that has led and you are so sad and we still have more than 999 other people who love you who appreciate you who are saying pastor you are our father in the lord we're going with you we will never leave you brought us into the kingdom and we're going to move on with you until we see the lord and then you forget all the 999 and that one solitary person that is disappointed you is gone and then you're still sorrowful and then maybe your wife if she was not spiritual enough she'll be telling you knock him talk against him walk against him so that his ministry where he has gone will not prosper then you leave feeding all the 999 who are still here and are saying pastor i came to church today i need encouragement i came to church today i need counseling i came to church today i need you to feed me you neglect them and you concentrate on that one single solitary fellow why are you doing that why don't you leave him leave him in the hands of god after judas iscariot went away jesus did not waste his time on him he concentrated on the rest of the apostles you will not avoid some people disappointing you there may be a cora dathan and abiram we still have millions of other people left leave the fellow that has gone concentrate on your ministry there'll be an Achan sometimes that will disappoint you leave him alone you still have many tribes and soldiers in the army of joshua they are following after you concentrate on them and you know sometimes you are going to be disappointed by absalom and when that absalom disappoints you don't concentrate on him we still have a lot of other people that want to receive your ministry and your help and your counseling and you know sometimes the demons will forsake you and then they will go into the world to love this present world but titus is still there luke is still there silas is still there timothy is still there epaphras is still there all these others are still there concentrate on them the point is this many times if we do not allow ourselves to see what we ought to see 
and to face the direction we ought to face a little thing that has happened to you in the fellowship will turn you to be another person you know you had been nice and gentle and loving and very encouraging but that one single thing can then turn you all over to become gall bitter instead of sugar instead of being honey and being good in the sight of the lord to do what the lord has called you to do the point is whatever may happen concentrate on what the lord has given you to do and when you concentrate on what the lord has given you to do that isolated solitary single event will not make you to go the right the wrong direction look at this one in first kings chapter 21 let's move on as we read eventually after jezebel had played her trick this is a partner that will ruin the ministry of the husband this is a partner that will destroy the ministry of the partner of the husband that will counsel advise the husband to do the wrong thing to go the wrong direction so that the progress the lord would have given you is not able to give you look at this from verse 5 but jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread and he said unto her because i speak unto neighbor the jezreelite and said unto him give me the vineyard for money or else if it please thee i will give thee another vineyard for it and he answered i will not give my thee my vineyard and jezebel his wife said unto him the advice is coming now the counseling is coming now the action to take is coming up this way you need to be careful you know there are some people it's their wives that actually run the ministry they are not men pastors of their own minds and they cannot know that well something is happening in the church a problem is rising up in the church and this is a stand i need to take they cannot go to the word of god and find solution for themselves and they cannot go into all the messages they have been hearing and find solution for themselves and then it's a wife that's actually running the ministry any little thing that happened my husband do it like this any problem with an individual in the church my husband deal with him like this any lady that is you know doing something to my husband do it like this and when it's like that you don't have a mind of your own and you cannot really go in the right direction that you need to go the partner can become a problem a stumbling block if you allow that in the ministry and then it says in verse in verse eight in verse seven and jezebel his wife said dost thou now govern the kingdom of israel arise and each bridge and let thine heart be merry i will give thee the vineyard of neighbors the jezreelites so she wrote letters in ahab's name and sealed them with a seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in a city and dwelt with neighbors and she wrote in the letter saying proclaim a fast and set neighbors on among the people and then you know the story already eventually that's how they killed neighbors and then jezebel now after she had that said arise and possess verse 15 and it came to pass when jezebel heard that neighbors was stoned and was dead that jezebel said to ahab arise and take possession of the vineyard of neighbors the jezreelite which he refused to give thee for money for neighbors is not alive but dead and it came to pass when ahab heard that neighbors was dead that ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of neighbors the jezreelite to take possession of it and the word of the lord came to elijah the tishbite saying arise go down to meet here the king of israel which is in samaria behold he is in the vineyard of neighbors whither he is gone down to possess it and thou shalt speak unto him saying thus says the lord as thou killed and also taking possession thou shalt speak unto him saying thus says the lord in the place where the dogs lick the blood of neighbors shall dogs lick thy blood even thine verse 25 but they there was none like ahab which did set himself to work wickedness in the sight of the lord whom jezebel his wife stirred up partner partners are good and great 
when they say the right thing do the right thing and they support you in the ministry and they do not allow themselves to be controlled by satan and then to control your satanic influence number six partnership again we can say a lot of good things for partnership and it's very good as we're partnering together fellowshipping together working together but we need to make ourselves understand that the each of the partners i'm not talking now of husband and wife i've dealt with husband and wife i'm talking of partners in ministry each of the partners must know the right thing know the right person they must know christ and they must know the word of god and they must agree together on the word of god and be willing to go the right direction partnership if you look at a uh, first uh, kings chapter 22 first kings chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 1 it says in first kings chapter 22 verse 1 and they and they continue three years without war between syria and israel and it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of judah came down to the king of israel and the king of israel said unto the unto his servants know ye that ramos in gilead is ours and will be still and take each not out of the hand of the king of syria and he said unto Jehoshaphat, will not go with me to battle to ramos in gilead ramos gilead and Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Jehoshaphat was a good king, and the Lord had blessed him, promoted him, and prospered him. But you see, at that time, he was getting into partnership with the wrong king. And he said, I am just like you, and my people are like your people. I want to turn over to four, Second Chronicles to continue that story. But before I turn over, before I turn over, that is First Kings, chapter twenty-two. You know, it was in First Kings, chapter twenty-one, that Ahab had the curse and the judgment, the condemnation upon him. And to know that the condemnation of God from Elijah, from God through Elijah, had come on Ahab in chapter 21. And then in the very next chapter, for Jehoshaphat to join in with Ahab, having the curse of God upon him. Think about that. When you know that people are not living right, yes, partnership is good. But check up their lives. If they've driven away their wives and they're with another woman, or if you know that they are practicing witchcraft even though they say they are in ministry if you know that they are doing evil and they have sold themselves to satan even though they are preaching and carrying the bible you are not to partner with them you are not to fellowship with them and you will not be in fellowship with the that with the workers of iniquity uh, unfortunately or surprisingly joshua fat after what took place in chapter 21 he came to chapter 22 and he joined affinity partnership with ahab now in second chronicles chapter 18 second chronicles chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 1 now jehoshaphat had, had riches and honor in abundance and he joined affinity with ahab and then in verse 3 and ahab the king of israel said unto jehoshaphat king of judah well thou go with me to remoth gilead he answered i am as thou art and my people are as thy people and we will be with thee in the war eventually the story is that jehoshaphat said but let's hear from god but Ahab was not hearing from god in verse 6 but jehoshaphat said is there not here a prophet of the lord besides that we might inquire of him and the king of israel said unto jehoshaphat there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the lord but i hate him for he never prophesied good unto me but always evil the same is micaiah the son of imla jehoshaphat said let not the king say so eventually they called this prophet and the prophet then told them that the judgment of god is upon this man and you're not going to escape in that battle but jehoshaphat after hearing that still remained in partnership in ministry with that man ahab and then eventually as they were going to the battlefield ahab wanted to play a game on jehoshaphat you know if we're really in partnership you'll not want to play a game on me i will not want to play a game on you i will not want you to uh, get into trouble but ahab was very very clever in a very negative wicked manner I said jehoshaphat let's do it like this i will disguise myself that they will not know that i am the king you just put on your kingly princely robe or your royal robe and jehoshaphat didn't understand 
and then they went to the battlefield you read it in that chapter and then when they saw him they said that's the king of israel we're after him shoot him and kill him and uh, they have thought well i got him into trouble you see when partnership is not helping us when partnership is just going to make them the people we're in partnership with to get us into trouble to destroy our lives and destroy our ministries then we're not wise in that partnership he cried unto god and the lord delivered him and then they just shot an arrow just by chance and it came on ahab and ahab eventually died but look at chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace in, to Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Ananiah, the seer, went out to meet him and said to the king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly or love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is the wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Partnership may destroy us if the people we're in partnership with are not standing with the Lord now number seven presumption presumption some of the things we need to overcome in ministry is presumption and these were taken from the life of samson judges in judges chapter 13 verse 25 the spirit of the lord began to move him that samson at times in the camp of dan between zora and eshtal and then as you go on in the life of this samson verses five and six and then when samson he went down on his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath and behold the young lion roared against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid he had the power of God but you see the power of God he had made him to be presumptuous to take everything for granted I've got it all and nothing will ever bring me down in chapter 15 verse 11 chapter 16 verse 11 then three thousand men of judah went to the top of the rock Etam and said to samson knowest thou not that the philistines are rulers over us what is this that thou hast done unto us and he said unto them as they did unto me so have i done unto them and he said unto him we are we are come down to bind thee that we may deliver thee into the hand of the philistines and samson said unto them swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves and they spake unto him saying no but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hands but surely we will not kill thee and they bound him with two new cords and brought him down unto the uh, from the rod and when he came to lehi the philistines shouted against him and the spirit of the lord came mightily upon him well and the cause that were upon his hands became as flats that was born to a fire and he, and his bands were loose from off his hands and he found a new job born of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith because of that power he became presumptuous look who i am and look what i have that presumption got him into trouble chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 6 and delilah said unto samson tell me i pray thee wherein thy great strength lieth, wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee in verse 15 and she said unto him how canst thou say i love thee when thine heart is not with me thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me there wherein thy great strength lieth and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his sad and said unto her there has not come up he raised up on my head for i have been in nazarite unto god from my mother's womb if i be shaven then my strength will go from me and i will become i shall become weak and be like other men uh, any other man when delilah saw that she had told her all is heard she sent and called for the lords of the philistines saying come up this once for he has showed me all his heart then the lords of the philistines came upon upon up unto her and they brought money in their hand and she made him to sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and they and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the philistines be upon thee samson and he awoke out of his sleep 
and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not, he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. He lost the power. Presumption. Presumption. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison's house. These are enemies to the progress in ministry. And we need to overcome them. And we are going to overcome them. I said we are going to overcome them. Persecution will not overcome you. The Philistines will not overcome you. The pleasure of the flesh will not overcome you. Even prosperity will not destroy you. Your partner will be your helper and not your hinderer. And partnership will not hinder you. Presumption will not have any place in your life. We are overcomers already. I said we are overcomers already. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And he strengthens us. Now, as we take care of all these things, I will say, I'm going to watch. I will not allow them to get into my life. And you're getting them, keeping them away from your life. The victory of the Lord will never leave your life. And we will go on conquering and to conquer in Jesus' name. Because greater you see that is in us than he that is in the world. We're going to conquer. I said we're going to conquer. And that spirit of the conqueror is what the Lord is giving us now. You rise up on your feet. And all those seven things we have mentioned now. You're going to tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am. Take care of me. Help me. Don't allow any of these things to conquer me. They will not conquer you. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer.